everybody. This is the Intro to Real Estate 101 course, and I am thrilled to have you here with me today. Let me just tell you, this is a picture of me about 20 pounds ago, about a year ago, okay? But my name is Whitney Nosley. I'm the broker for Whitney Buys Houses. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a real estate genius. I'm a real estate badass. I am all about real estate all the time, and that's what we're here about to talk about tonight or today. So what I want you to know is that real estate is not as complicated as you think it is. It's not as complicated as you want to make it. So stop it. Stop trying to make real estate hard. It's not. Also, stop telling me that you want to go to real estate school to get your license. If you're looking at this page right now, you're going to learn everything that you need to know from real estate school and you're not going to have to pay me a couple thousand dollars in fees and fines and dues and licenses and insurance and everything to learn this information. I'm just going to give it to you. Okay? So, how many feet are in a mile? Say it with me, class. 5,280 feet are in a mile. And how many square feet are in an acre? 43,560. That's right. There are 43,560 square feet in an acre. Congratulations. The rest of real estate school is used to teach you how to stay out of jail, how to be ethical, how to protect yourself in the paperwork so that the buyer or seller that you're working so hard for doesn't come back and sue you. <laughs> That's what you learn in regular real estate school. So let's continue on with what we actually need to know to be a successful real estate investor because we do not need real estate school to be a successful real estate investor. All right, this is my pyramid and I got to let you know right here and right now that real estate is a pyramid scheme. Everything in real estate, whether you have a license or not, it's all built on the pyramid and this is my genius description or display of how the pyramid works in real estate. So the first level of our pyramid is agricultural, okay? Agricultural land is what everything started as in America. When the Indians were settling it, there wasn't any residential lots, there wasn't any developers, there wasn't any commercial builders. It was all agricultural. When you're driving down the highway and it's pretty countryside on the left and on the right, that's agricultural land, okay? Anywhere that they're growing something that we're going to eat, whether it's a cow's pasture or a cornfield, that's agricultural land. Agricultural land is really cool because it usually has the least amount of taxes. And if you can get your agricultural land zoned for a greenway, you're going to pay like almost nothing in taxes. That also means you can't rent it, you can't change it, you can't alter it, you basically can't do anything with it, but you don't pay any taxes. So it's a toss up as to what you want to do. Next is residential land. And residential land is where the houses are built. Your subdivision is on residential land. Your, your neighborhood, your grouping of houses, any, anywhere people gonna, are going to live is going to be zoned residential. Okay, and for most of the countryside, a lot of the land is residential. For the sake of this pyramid, agricultural land can be turned into residential land. In fact, as we go up the pyramid, you can always go up a level, but you usually don't come back down a level once you've gone up. Okay, so residential land will probably not be turned back into agricultural land. One reason is because there's more taxes on residential land and the county gets used to collecting more taxes and they don't want it to be agricultural anymore. And also because usually when somebody builds a house on it, they put a septic tank in, they put the sewer lines in, and it's just not really good for agricultural land anymore. Agricultural land is usually bought and sold in large chunks, maybe 5, 10, 50 acre tracks at a time, whereas residential land can be sold, you know, by a quarter acre. It can be sold by 150 feet by 50 feet. Residential land is where you're going to build houses. 
It's where you're going to live. It's where you're going to get your Christmas cards. It's where you're going to get baby invitations. Residential land is what you're going to see a single family house built on. But while I'm talking about residential, let's talk just for a second about duplexes, triplexes, and quadplexes. And most people are familiar with a duplex, okay? That's one house divided in two with two different addresses, two different mailboxes, two different electrical panels, two different cable bills. Okay, that's a duplex. A triplex is the same thing, but it's three different mailboxes. It's three different electrical units. It's three different heat and air units. It's three different cable bills. And a quadplex, you guessed it. That's four different people living under one roof, all divided into their own individual apartments, basically. But once you hit five, once you hit five units, you're bumped into commercial real estate. And this is where it really starts to get fun. So commercial real estate is going to be McDonald's. It's going to be a shopping center. It's going to be where people are conducting business on a regular basis. Car lots are probably commercial, uh, commercial use. Um, McDonald's, Walgreens, Walmart, all, anywhere where you're going to go shopping. Even, you know, a Reap the Sow boutique is probably going to be on commercial a veterinarian veterinarian's office is going to be commercial land your church believe it or not is on commercial land okay so commercial land is all around us as well and these different layers of the pyramid are really important when you start to decide what kind of real estate investor do you want to be do you want to invest in land and then get it rezoned for residential so that a developer will buy it and either turn it into a subdivision or a shopping center? Do you want to just buy commercial buildings? Do you want to buy apartments? Do you want to buy trailer parks? Or do you want to buy houses? Do you want to stay in residential, single family residential units? It doesn't matter to me, but you need to know out of these four divisions, and we'll get to four here in just a second, what you want to be, what kind of real estate investor you want to be. So commercial is going to be, when we talk about apartments, it's five units or more, or it's anywhere where commercial business is being performed on a daily basis. Um, like I said, though, once you're in residential zoning and you get bumped up to commercial zoning, you usually don't come back down to residential. Let's go on to industrial land. And y'all, industrial land is the very tip top of the pyramid because it is the tip top place that you want to be in real estate. We put it at the top because there's not as much of it. It's usually more expensive. But if there's not as much of it and there's still a demand for it and it costs more money, guess what? We get to charge more money for rent. Because industrial land, this is going to be your manufacturing centers. This is going to be warehouses. This is going to be landfills. This is going to be outside storage. This is going to be, you know, kind of the ugly, nitty-gritty stuff that makes America run, but that we don't really want in our subdivisions. We want it over on the east side of town or the south side of town or the north side of town or you know we want it kind of tucked away we still want all the revenue that the industrial land brings in we still want all the jobs that the industrial land brings in but we don't necessarily want to look at it all right so here's some different ways that you can buy real estate and most people know that cash is king well i'm telling you that cash is not king in real estate because it can take a whole lot of time to get that cash back. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can lose all that cash real fast. And I don't want you to do that. So let's look at some other ways that you can buy real estate. We can have a VA loan, but if you didn't serve in the military or you weren't uh, discharged with honors, then you can't have a VA loan. Most people think they can just go get an FHA loan, which includes Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, but only 18% of the population can actually just go get a loan because you have to have money, you have to have a job, you have to have a um, credit score, you have to be really good looking on paper to go get an FHA loan. And once you go get 
too many FHA loans, the bank, the government, somebody decides that they can't give you any more. So that's when you start going to the conventional bank loans and you go to the small town banks, you go to the small credit unions, you go to local people and you say, hey, I need to go borrow some money. I want to buy some real estate. Again, though, you have to have good credit. You have to have a job. You have to have all this stuff. <sighs> and it's just a lot of work. So what I learned how to do, because I forked over all my money and the banks didn't believe in me. They saw I had good credit, they saw I had a good job, but they saw that I'd spent all my money on real estate, so they wouldn't give me any loans. So I figured out and I became the queen of owner financing and lease options because those take no money down, they take no credit, and they take no banks. Nobody's gonna tell you that you've spent too much money on real estate and they can't give you any more loans if you're doing owner financing and lease options. Nobody's going to tell you that your credit is bad and not give you an owner finance or a lease option. Owner finance and lease options are so amazing and because only 18% of the population can go get a regular loan, that means the rest of us need to be going after these owner financing and lease option deals. Except there's only like 2% of us that do. And those 2% of us that do go after the owner financing and lease option deals, we're tomorrow's millionaires. If you got any questions on that, let me know. I'll be glad to talk to you more about lease options and owner financing. But let's just continue on some other ways that you can buy real estate. You can put an option down on a piece of property, which basically says that you're going to put some money up front that you can buy the property for a certain amount of money anytime in the next X amount of years. Lastly, you can use a private money partner and this is somebody that has a lot of money or they got equity in their house or, you know, they're just looking for a good way to make some money with their money and they don't want to go through the hassle of actually buying houses. They just want their money to work for them. Private money partners are awesome to have in your back pocket and to use their money when you're buying and flipping houses. Ooh, okay. So here's some ways to find real estate and when I work with you in my program, this is the intro program. This is the quick start. This is not the whole kit and caboodle. These are just some different ways that I have of finding off-market properties. I don't want you to waste your time calling expired listings, and I don't want you to waste your time with a real estate license hunting through the MLS to try to find a good deal. The good deals, the quote-unquote good deals, aren't on the MLS. They're the silent sleepers all around you. And that's what I'm going to teach you how to do. All these different ways, I've got videos and scripts and formulas and worksheets so that you can work through each one of these topics to get a really fat check. Okay, and then let's talk about exit strategies. Since this is the intro course, one thing I want you to know is that an exit strategy is just what it sounds like. How are you going to get rid of this property? I mean, it's really nice that you're going out and you're hunting and you're pecking and you're making offers and you're trying to make deals happen, but what are you going to do with it when you get it? Are you going to buy and hold it so you're going to keep it forever and ever, amen? I don't really like regular rentals. I like those lease options because you get a big lease option fee. Maybe you get $10,000 down before somebody moves in. I've had people give me $40,000 to move into one of my houses and then move out seven months later. Can you believe that? Because it happens, but it won't happen on a regular rental. That's only going to happen with a lease option. Now, you could owner finance these deals back out, but I teach my students that we always buy as many deals as we can with owner financing, but we never, ever, ever sell with owner financing. I want to buy houses with owner financing, but I don't want to sell them with owner financing. I want to give these people a lease option on a short term to get them to buy this house. If worse comes to worse, you could list the house with an agent to sell it. But the fastest way, the most efficient way, the almost guaranteed way that your house is going to sell on a certain day and time is to auction it. And I am a licensed auctioneer in Tennessee and I do real estate auctions. I love auctions. And it's a really fast solution for people who need that quick fix. 
Now, if we're talking about agricultural land, then you could develop it or you could sell it to a developer who is going to turn it into a subdivision or a commercial strip center or something. And you could get a, a fee for doing that. You could fix and flip it. You could do a lipstick on a pig kind of flip. Or you could go in like the TV shows do and you could gut the whole kitchen and spend $50,000. Uh, you could also trade real estate. You could trade up, you could trade down, you could do a 1031, which is a IRS uh, definition for how you can trade up and using, using the 1031 exchange, you don't pay taxes on the trade up value, but that's a whole long story. This is the intro class, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the first video. There's three videos in this series, and I hope you've enjoyed the first one. Again, if you want to, you can follow me on Instagram at Whitney Buys Houses. I'm very active on Facebook under my name, Whitney Nicely, or under my Facebook page, Whitney Buys Houses. Uh, you can find more information about my courses, about my programs, about other specials or any kind of deals I have going on on WhitneyNicely.com, but you can always email me info at WhitneyNicely.com and I'll be glad to answer your questions or get you on a strategy call so that we can find out what you need to do to become an awesome real estate rock star and get started with that residual income today.